Right, hi guys. Uh, welcome to part number two of the series. Uh, first club, uh, FC Gifu um, in the G3, which is basically the third league of Japan. Going to probably play around three matches in this. Uh, it's currently 2 a.m. Originally, I was going to do a um, Colony Survival series but i tried playing the game and i just didn't like it <laughs> like like honestly i didn't like it <laughs> so i am gonna see if there's anything else that i want to play instead uh as well we have brought some new people in um so if i am not mistaken i believe yeah, Jun Nakahara, uh, we brought in uh, three stars overall. I believe he was more. Like, I swear he was like five stars. That's very weird. And then also Jun Umari, uh, Lebanese. Very aggressive, uh, very good overall. Uh, basically, just goes straight in the team alongside Nakahara. Um, basically, we're going to play against Nagano, uh, Becero, who are currently 6th. Uh, we're currently in 16th, they're currently in 6th on 31 points, we're on 17 points. So, really, we have to try and, like, get out of... The bottom half of the table. Now there is 20 games going on. If I am seeing this correctly, there are a ton of different games. Uh, so ours runs from March until December. Uh, and then basically we go into the next season in March if we stay. Uh, obviously, our promises that we have is basically avoid relegation, which is pretty much what we're going to try and do. Um, also, if you didn't know, uh, last match we did actually win 3-2 against Amabari. Amabari, I think it is. Uh, he was... I believe, I believe they were first. I believe Emma Barry was first, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and as well, we're not doing particularly too bad. We are trying to bring in some more people. Uh, we do also have some people that I have decided to take out the team and. A few people that are unregistered as well, including Takumi Fujitani. Uh, basically, going to try and replace people's positions with someone else. So sadly, they'll have to get out of the team there. Ukitas, another about uh, getting his uh, captaincy taken off of him. However, he wasn't particularly good. As a oh wait, <laughs> I just realised why it's because this guy came in, which isn't particularly good. <laughs> but anyway, guys, uh, basically we are going to go in with the first match for this evening. Uh, not going to put any uh, music on just because honestly, uh, there isn't really any music that I think I would like. And honestly, I kind of think that uh, sometimes, definitely with this sort of series, it is very annoying, you know, having music in the background of these style of, you know, matches and stuff. Also, we'll point out as well, uh, very sorry about. Out. Not um, or not continuing the Ajax game. 
I just kind of uh, didn't really like it after the first season. I think mainly because, like, I was still playing the beta save. And, like, a lot of people kept saying that, you know, the full save was a lot better. <laughs> so, who really knows. Also, well, I also watched over Boxing Day after my parents and my sister and my dog went over to uh, my grandparents, uh, the um, season one and two of Welcome to Wrexham, just because I kind of like the... I am kind of a bit of a fan of the behind the scenes of football clubs. Uh, I did like the... I think it was the... Um, uh, QPR four-year plan, which was quite nice. Quite nice to watch. Uh, same with... The Sunderland Till I Die, because I kind of like the behind the scenes of those type of things. That I kind of like the behind the scenes of the Welcome to Wrexham stuff. Um, Rob and you know, like you know Rob McAnally and um, Ryan Reynolds. You know, like at times they are kind of like forcing way onto the camera. Like I do kind of like um, like the fan aesthetic to it <laughs> as in like oh yeah we've had like you know blah 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 you know all of this type of stuff and it's it's quite good with that and then obviously at times they're like oh yeah it's just bringing a guest star for no reason which didn't really make any sense like honestly hopefully in you know like for how long it is, hopefully there's, like, honestly, in my opinion, I think, obviously, like, um, like, owners that, like, superstars in that spotlight, they should basically take the role as well to kind of also help out all of the other teams. Like, for example, you know, like, I would kind of say if if there was a way, I would probably have like owners that are quite rich to sort of like have a help with teams that are struggling financially. You know, kind of like um, you know we're not playing for this long. This team's kind of struggling. How about if we play an away match over there? Where they keep the tickets, they keep everything, and basically they get help with that. That could be quite cool. That's well, like hopefully in the future with Football Manager as well. Maybe more behind the scenes stuff with that, you know, kind of similar to what was happening with the Premier Manager. Where actually you could see the behind the scenes, you could actually. Like, uh, have like a have like a executive assistant to basically help you with stuff, you know. That obviously, you thought, manager, there are fans that don't like that though, but I kind of would think that would be a quite cool thing to have, you know, where there is, you know, kind of, you know, there is those kind of things with that. Um, like, honestly, honestly, FIFA with, like, the cutscenes, I think if, for next year's game, if they brought cutscenes in, I would be like, uh, do you really need this in? Like, and then it's just, like, generic, you know, sort of stuff with that too, which is, you know, kind of a little bit annoying. Hmm. Uh, let's bring in Nduka, who is a bit better than our other player. I like, honestly, if I if I made a football management game, 
I would kind of go back to the old football manager ways, where it's literally just like circles instead. Because for a long time, I think this year is kind of a bit different. Yeah, with obviously like the way that the players run. Occasionally, though, it does kind of go back to the stick figures where it's like two boating but still running on the pitch. <laughs> Like, but full margin is a good, like, is a good thing to have. But then, like, full manager, I think it's the only main, is I think the only main, um, the only main kind of one to have that. Alongside FIFA is the, well, EA FC is the only, like, big marketed one. There isn't, like, anything that's all the underdog to that. Uh, it's probably the same with NFL, you know, and you know, obviously the Madden, stuff like that. Like, if NCAA came back, I think a lot of people would rather play that. Which is kind of fun, though, just because EA are power hungry. <laughs> power hungry, and I think they didn't even want to. I think EA. I oh, know, was it FIFA or EA, EA that didn't want to pay the FIFA fees? I think it might be an EA that I didn't want to. <laughs> but like there's there's literally nothing. There's literally like wow, that's a good goal. There's literally like no alternative to a lot of different things. Like even with superhero stuff, like the problem is is that Agents of Shield was maybe the best Marvel show, like the best TV, like Marvel TV show ever, because like they actually thought of stuff and they actually thought of a very good story. The sad thing though is the fact that obviously, obviously um, they had to tie their stuff in with the movies, which kind of sucked. It's like, honestly, I don't care about you know, the aftermath of blah, blah, blah. You know, where, like, they're going through a level of, I think it was four, The Dark World. Also, the original four were, like, literally, like, just randomly in an episode, they're just like, oh, yeah, we've got all of these, you know, different things, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, this woman can basically capture a load of like men and all the men apart from I think Coulson was it Coulson who's the only one that actually didn't get like taken over which everyone at the time was like huh that's a bit odd <laughs> but yeah like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was a very very good TV show <laughs> I feel like the Disney Marvel stuff now just is so bad. Like, it's basically quantity over quality. <laughs> like, like, you can have so many episodes, but still have, you know, sort of like quality with that stuff. Like, I think, well, Marvel and and Star Wars. Like, honestly, you know, the Mandalorian now is just literally a fetch quest character. Uh, Soka, not particularly the best. Especially because they completely changed everything about Rebels. Which is just so bad. Like, oh yeah, it's only Sabine wants to be a Jedi. And I'm like, what? <laughs> No. 
No, it literally does not make any sense with that. <laughs> but then also, why is Ahsoka getting her own show when, like, literally they could put it on someone else? And I feel like... I feel like Kathleen Kennedy is just going like, oh yeah, you're a woman character, you're getting on your own show now. And like, the Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff, and also, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I don't think should have been a series. Because we know what's going to happen, and I swear to God, if they have more CGI stuff, like, like, a honestly, if they go for the route of, like, having an older Princess Leia, who, like, I think in the fourth film, does she actually recognise Obi-Wan Kenobi? I don't think she does. Or she does, it's never actually put in. Which is very, very weird. Anyway, first game, 1-1-0. One, one, That's quite good. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, I am supposed to have some money put in my account. Hopefully in a bit. Well, oh no, it's going on Friday, isn't it? Mm. Ugh. Hey guys, also the next part. Sorry about the abrupt end to that, but uh, what can you do? Hey guys, also the next part, uh, which will be in seven days. So I'll see you all then. Uh, luckily, I'm working six pm till ten pm, so I think I can definitely get out three, maybe four, depending on, but probably three games to sort of have another part of this also in the background i'm also doing the tw series also as well if you put in the comment section down below on any series that i have kind of forgotten that you would like me to sort of do another episode of feel free to let me know uh which will definitely be appreciated anyway guys i'll see you in the second game for today I'll see you all then. Ba, 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 ba. Right, so I changed the formation. Uh, <coughs> is it good? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, which is kind of a thing, I will say. Uh, anyway, let's just double the match. I'm not sure why. Am I actually talking? I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought I was going to be talking for a second. <clears throat> so we're against Yokohama. Uh, we have brought some new people in. Uh, I can see. Uh... Are we going to be good? I'm not particularly sure. Honestly. Well, weirdly... So this is... Is that a... Um, squish me... That's a pretty secure reach thing. Which I think also... This is like a... Um, stress ball basically it's kind of like a squishy thing just like it squishes which is kind of cool I'm just doing that <laughs> I will say having the Japanese league in this is quite cool um, is there really I don't think there's really any other any other, um, well, any other, um, countries to kind of add at this point? I don't really think so. <clears throat> at least I don't think so. 
As well, I'm also uh, watching The History of Football Manager uh, by Australian... Hang on. By... Oh, Brazilian Fury. Quite nice. Um, because, honestly, I will say there's a very big difference between Championship Manager and Football Manager. Mm. Also, Championship Manager, not particularly good, especially because of, um, you know, stuff. Then there was also a FIFA Manager that came out. That was kind of okay, but it didn't really work. Um, I think it's like uh, Football Club Management now, but I'm pretty sure that's just a mobile port. Uh, not really that many, uh, not really that many, uh, different ones anymore. Um, as well, there isn't really that many shooters anymore. I mean, there's, I mean, Call of Duty is mainly the big one. Medal of Honor just disappeared after their abysmal, like, revamp. Uh, Fortnite absolutely sucks. All I play is that game is just, you know, not very good. <laughs> same with, honestly, same with like every, every like uh, Battle Royale game. I'm just like, I don't want to play it. <laughs> Even CSGO, I don't. I feel like I played it once um, without a team, like, single player, I think. Or, uh, what are the single things? Try playing that, didn't like it at all. Just didn't like it. <laughs> like, honestly, you're just, like, playing the game and you're just like, oh, God. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Then really, like, especially with a lot of the different, I would say with like a lot of different games nowadays, like especially triple A's, Baldur's Gate 3, I, I would say it's kind of okay. I will say Spider-Man 2 should have won Game of the Year, because that one is... Like a quite a fun game. I would say they are bugs though. Like whenever you have bugs with a game, it just doesn't work. Like if if Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven got delayed to where it fixed all the bugs and then had the patchwork to you know be like. Oh yeah, how about over the time we'll add new stuff to it. So instead of having Phantom Liberty like come out like years after, it suddenly came out, you know, in um like with that that would be amazing to do. But obviously the annoying thing is the fact that, you know obviously the you know, the, um, the main people that were behind, like, the advertising and stuff behind the game were just like, well, if it's not released, we lose a lot of money. And I'm like, like, me, me as a fan, like, hearing that, I'm just like, you're not, like, you're, you have how much money? <laughs> you have how much money, yet you're... Asking your, you know, asking your people to essentially just kind of bring out utter garbage. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Then as well, me playing the game, like, um, I think it was either this channel or it was the last channel that I had where I was trying to play Cyberpunk 27. 2077, and like, I got up to a mission in the main plotline, 
that basically it was just you know like one of those um one of those like um sneaking missions of like where you're supposed to get on the float or something and like literally the guards found me but didn't do anything <laughs> like the whole of it until i got to like one part and then they're like oh shit this guy bang 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 but then i didn't get hit or anything which is just weird <laughs> like and i feel like especially with games nowadays like there's if you have micro if you have micro transactions i'm not gonna use them like i don't know why you would put them in learn from battlefront 2 <laughs> Then from Battlefront 2, the 2017 one, I think. I think I'm having 2017. But basically, like, if you put micro transactions in a game, at least have a way for them to, like, for people to not use the micro transactions or have the people with the micro transactions to be in their own thing and have the people you know have them be separated <laughs> because even fifa nowadays it's just like oh yeah we're just gonna you know put you against this random person <laughs> that has this much stuff and i'm like i don't like this <laughs> As well, uh, with, with like Starfield, I honestly don't care about Starfield. Honestly, I would rather play The Outer Worlds. <laughs> That's how bad Starfield, I think, would be. Like, I think I got £70 in uh, Steam gift cards for my family. And honestly... I watch this Starfield and I'm like, uh, would I actually like this game? And I just I went, nah. <laughs> nah. And then essentially it's it's even more buggy, which is very weird. It's more buggy than Fallout 76. <laughs> or actually I think Fallout 76 might be a little bit better from launch. <laughs> Especially because, like, they made missions, but then weirdly, missions just abruptly ended out of nowhere. Which I'm pretty sure has happened in Skyrim and Oblivion. Actually, in fact, every Bethesda game. Now that I'm thinking about it, that has happened in every Bethesda game. Where... Just a mission abruptly ends or doesn't even do anything and you just sit there looking at your screen just go like what what <laughs> or like literally you're coming back to a mission you try and complete it and it's also you to do this other thing and you're like you know you're like looking through the missions Stuff like that, then so they will look at you and go, Wait, I already did this. <laughs> and then so you're like, What? <laughs> like, honestly, like, Bethesda, if Elder Scrolls 6, I don't think it's just going to be the same as Starfield, it's just going to be on an outdated engine that should have been updated. Like, even FIFA technically has a new engine. Because I think they actually went away from Frostbite to a new one. Obviously, though, now they've got like a load of bugs for that now. But essentially, that is a FPS. <laughs> but then the, the problem is that Elder Scrolls and Fallout have two completely different types of doing stuff 
where, for example, you know, like killing, like enemies and stuff, have two different ways. And then, you know, obviously with, I think quite a lot of stuff, like with both of them, like Elder Scrolls has, you know, is basically made in fantasy. And then Fallout is made in post nuclear. But like, they should be two completely different engines. Same with Starfield, that should have been a completely different engine where it's like, okay, so we're going to use this engine for this, but they, they really just use the same creation kit that they've used for years. And it just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next part. Sorry about that. Uh, Rambling there. Right, well, this is a bit confusing. Uh, is it? I'm pretty sure this is new. Why is he annoyed about being substituted? Okay, get out of my team. Okay. Alright. Intermediary. Don't know what that is, but okay. Decline that. Before it all. Oof. Which is kind of a bit odd. Oof. Kind of a bit odd that I haven't actually seen that before. Which is slightly odd. Hmm. Also, we're at the Emperor's Cup, but we are. I see. Oh wait, there's Osaka for. Wait, Osaka's fourteenth, but yeah, they're in the Emperor's Cup. That's good. Oh, Nara's. Nara's in there, but they're nineteenth. What? <laughs> so we've got two. We've got two J three teams. So let's scout those two uh, because we are in the same league as those. And then hopefully that'll be good for that. Uh, we have basically been uh, essentially taking people out of the team as well, just because they weren't particularly good. Uh, we have also signed quite a bit of people. Uh, most of them are quite good. Uh, we've got this guy who is 15 years old. Uh, in the under 18s, I don't. F yeah, he is unavailable for loan. Because I believe people have to be 16 or something, I think. Guys, uh, so we've got our last match for today, which is against Ahim FC. Uh, I'm very confused as to why. Basically, as to why uh, Kishi Wagga is just being annoyed about being substituted. Can I show you how to. Hang on, let me just check real quick. That was in this match, isn't it? In this match? Yeah, 6.8. Where? Which, which position was he playing in? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I took you out because you, I don't really, yeah, I think I put a guy up here and then I put this guy here. That's the reason why. <laughs> the reason why, and also he has, you know, kind of injuries as well, <laughs> so it literally does not make any sense <laughs> why that would be a thing. <laughs> like... Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just add our 
schedule pops in. Uh, so it's currently... Well, it's nearly January. And technically, I've only played... Kind of a season with more stuff in it. So hopefully I can get, like, some uh, good seasons in. Anyway, guys, I am going to pause uh, before we get to our last match of the morning slash last game of today, basically. Anyway, guys, I'll see you all in a sec. Uh, I don't know who he was. Who is the other guy that I signed? I sound like a 15 year old someone. I think it might have been Ishii Saka. Now, let me, let me double check. Let me double check. Could have sworn I signed a. Was it Abe? Oh wait, I think it was Abe. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it was definitely Abe. Funahashi. Also quite good under 18s goalkeeper. I'm thinking as well. Lock off. Oh yeah, and then uh, Ujikami. Uh, I'll probably still keep that one really decent, honestly. Um, I kind of want Abe to go in there. Actually, I'll put probably Abe on the bench, basically. Also, definitely keep out this guy. Uh, for Ibuto, I guess. Put him in there for Shikara. Shizaki, I guess. Yeah, honestly, honestly, I just kind of want to get rid of um, this guy. Maybe also get rid of the Akita as well. Because obviously they suck. <laughs> they suck. I do not want them in the team at all. At all. <laughs> they completely suck. They were. It was kind of like, oh well. <laughs> uh, discuss issue. Uh, change my decisions. I mean, honestly, there's like a load of players that honestly should really get in the first team anyway. <laughs> I'm kind of like making players mad, but I don't really care, I guess. Right, so what do I left off last time? Oh yeah, the first is sucks. Um, I am so on eBay. I'm currently uh, trying to bid for um, you go worldwide edition for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, One hundred seven PC games. And also uh, 61 Doctor Who DVDs. Which I'm actually kind of buzzing for. <laughs> Especially the Doctor Who DVDs. I feel like, honestly, Doctor Who... Like... Doctor Who, the classic Doctor Who, is very different to the revival. If you haven't watched the classic one, there's just... So many monsters that, like, basically aren't monsters. <laughs> um, like, clunky characters or characters that don't really make any sense. Uh, I remember, basically, if you watched the Doctor Who, like, special where they went on the 50th anniversary, where... Oh, come on. How is that a penalty? <laughs> uh, well, basically, I believe it was the In Time and Space, or what it was called. Um, 
where basically uh, the first Doctor's there and basically it's like the retelling of what happened there. <laughs> Which I believe might have gone edited to make um, the BBC like look a bit better. Like honestly, honestly in my opinion, Doctor Who in the classic era was definitely still a little bit like laughed at. I feel like when I think it was a uh, John Pertwee, I think, or it might have been Tom Baker, where like actually started to gain traction, because uh, like, because basically with Tom Baker, like John Pertwee was a quite good doctor, like he sort of envisioned the role in a different way of like, honestly, like. It would be kind of like a James Bond, but it would, it would be the same way that James Bond is played. <clears throat> would be kind of terrible. Like, Daniel Craig suddenly just acting like the rest. So, like, with... So, basically, with uh, the Doctors, like, it's very good to, like, have them have uh, like different personalities even though the even though the 14th doctor i didn't really like it was because he looked a bit out of place like especially for david Tennant. like honestly is that kind of the best decision to sort of bring him back maybe not but also russell t davies uh with his Specials, I kind of didn't really like them. And also the 15th Doctor, like, obviously with the singing and stuff. It's like, oh god. Oh god, I want to get away from Disney, not suddenly watch Disney. I like... The new Doctor, I... It's sort of a bit hard getting used to because, like, I didn't watch, um, I didn't watch Jerry Workers just because, well, I tried to in the first and second episode, but I was like, oh god, this writing is so terrible. Like, I think there was a thing, I think, um, I think talking about... I think I was talking about uh, John Pertwee's, like, writing and stuff, like, basically he, basically they made it, like, where he's making fun of his own work. Essentially, because if you don't know, uh, he, I think it was from the 6th or 7th Doctor, where it's like an analysis of a episode where he says, like, it's not very good. Like, and <laughs> look at I, you're just like, wait, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> wait, hang on. If we just look at this correctly, you could also see it being with his own stuff. <laughs> like, which, which honestly, like, with, with obviously him and, like, and Jodie Whittaker, who, in my opinion, I haven't really watched any stuff that she's done. Uh, but we'll say, like... Like, you have the first female Doctor. Which is, like, in its own right, a very, very weird challenge to do. Because, obviously, you have... You have, basically, a load of... Uh, the minority audience, which is, you know, females, they, slash them, you know, sort of like coming into it, they're like, oh, no one's finally getting represented, you know, and so sort of like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll give it a watch, suddenly, oh, not particularly good. And also, uh, pretty much with the way that Chris Chibnall sort of was doing everything, like, he was just making up, like, weird, weird stuff with the plots. I like, 
<clears throat> well, honestly, some of the people that I brought in are, you know, to write the episodes. I thought that was a little bit weird. Like, suddenly you're going like, okay, why is this person that is, I was really like, you know, uh, soap operas and stuff, why are they suddenly writing an episode for Doctor Who? Like, Stephen Moffat, <laughs> I thought would, like, get a episode, like, even with the Weeping Angels, or something, <laughs> where... I was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I want to sort of do this. <laughs> you know, like, if I, well, let's say tomorrow I got phoned up by the BBC, I got told, hey, I want you to, you know, we're thinking of, uh, like, having, let's do this for a year, we want you to come in next year. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, give me all of the Doctor Who stuff. Give me all of your archives of the series. Or let me watch the series. I'll write down notes on what stuff I would like to do. Uh, what's the format of how many episodes I can do? Okay, I want to switch back to the classic Doctor Who version. Which is basically multiple parts of the same story. But, have it where, have it where basically every single week is basically about 20 minutes for each episode, with obviously no overlap, <laughs> like, like if you watch, if you watch Classic Doctor Who, you'll probably see like the uh, last two minutes of the last episode in the first minutes of the next episode which kind of goes with that like basically every week have seven parts also leading to essentially like the conclusion at the end of the episode and then basically boom do it again so for example have a i mean honestly honestly the daleks and the cybermen have kind of been overused a bit I've kind of been overused a bit, which I kind of like to see like a series without those monsters in. But I know Russell T. Davis is just going to put them in anyway. Just like, oh yeah, a wall, you know. <laughs> well, I think even uh, season one had the Daleks, which is weird seeing no Cybermen in it. <laughs> And then season two, the Southern had their own thing and all that. Season three had the Daleks, but I don't think they had the Cybermen again. Wait, did they have the Southern in that? I don't think they did. I don't think they did. They had it in two, but they didn't have it in three. But they didn't have it in four, which was really odd. I could be mistaken, but I definitely don't think I saw the Cybermen. And then basically Steve Moffat just went, Ah, oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Throw everything at the wall. Oh, God, that's not much. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, especially if I was in charge, I would like have multiple parts. Because I believe an hour or technically 40 minutes of a Doctor Who episode... For some of the plots, like it kind of loses traction for a bit. I was going for this, like, oh yeah, you know, like, s spoil this thing. You know, like, with the classic ones, there was, like, actual intrigue with it. You know, like, so, like, building, 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 ending, doing well. <laughs> like, I will say, I wish, I wish that the new Doctor Who's, like, kind of had, for, let's say, i say, like, five writers, in all in all, like, all writing the same stuff were coming in at the start of it, all together, basically writing their stuff together, 
So like Mark Gatliss, you know, those guys that have like done it. And I say have all of them like sort of write together a complete story. So it's sort of like a roundabout thing. Like so so like the showrunner would get this spot, they're basically building, 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 back to the showrunner, building, 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 showrunner again, but like the whole plot sort of level up. Kind of similar to the uh Russell Studio this uh bad wolf stuff, like that stuff was very really good. Mm. Like with Rose in season one. Season two, Rose didn't like. <laughs> she seemed way too cocky and seemed way too that sort of um, overbearing, I guess. Martha, quite good companion, but shouldn't have fallen in love with the Doctor. And the Doctor really in that series was kind of a bastard, I guess. Like, kind of, kind of after Rose left, he just seemed like a shell of himself. <laughs> Going on to Donna, kind of doing well, but then like, bleh. Matt Smith's Doctor, kind of liked at the start. And then I think like, Clara's one, I was like, why is she in love with... My Swiss Doctor, and then obviously changed into Peter Capaldi, and I was like, okay, I kind of like this Doctor. <laughs> and then Jimmy Waker, and I was like, alright, bye. <laughs> then Nakuta. Is it Nakuta? I can't remember. Uh, Nakuta Gatli. Gatwa. Mm. Uh, sex education um, fame. I will say, like, looking at him, I'm like, um, it's like, if I go mindless and suddenly sort of think of him in his character still from Sex Education, it looks so different. It's like, okay, like as well as his sonic device is a mouse, which kind of gives me a bit of a fallback to... Um, Oh, what's that terrible guy's name? Um, uh, Smithy from Gavin and Stacey. Oh, what's his name? Uh, the Late Late Show. Oh, yeah, James Corden. Where he absolutely... F I say that guy shouldn't have gone in two episodes. It doesn't make any sense why he does. <laughs> Like, of everyone, like, even, like, honestly, like, then as well, you have Jenny Coleman, who is quite a great actress, but just had, sort of, uh, well, the, the Victorian version of her would have been an excellent companion to have, but sadly, that never happened. Which is annoying because, like, I think a Victorian, like, person as the new companion would have been great. Okay, I saw about, uh, talk about a load of weird stuff. I'll see you all in the next episode of the series. Um, starting off against Armour Burry, who I think, uh, third anyway guys thank you all for watching please like subscribe and comment i'll see you all in the next episode have a good day and goodbye